morning, you guys. Um, so my youngest son recently started taking drum lessons. And I just found out that his drum teacher had twins. And you know what he named them? He named them both Anna. That's right. Both of them. Both are Anna. Anna one, Anna two. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Y'all can thank me later. Good morning. Good morning, Daily Huddlers. Thank you all so much for being with us here today on Wednesday, where we talk about relationships and communication. And the reason that Tara and I are so passionate about this is because we know that when you connect with another human being, that's when the magic happens. And with us today, before we introduce our guest, Marcy, we are going to talk about this and dive into this topic. But before we do that, I have some questions. And I'm going to start with my dear friend and co-host, Tara. Tara, what time is it? Catherine, the time is now, the most important time there is. That's right. That's right. So just to be present in this moment. And the second question I want to ask, Andrea, where are you and what are you grateful for? Catherine, I am right where I need to be, which is right here. And I'm grateful for, let me think, I, I, I'm feeling focused. So I'm grateful for focus brain. Oh, I love That's that. That's what I'm grateful for this morning. Oh, focus yeah, brain. You. Focus brain. Thank you for bringing that. Oh, good stuff. Okay. And finally, Sorrel, how are you and who are you going to hug today? Hello there. Hello there. I am the way I say I am. I am alive and vibrant and I'm going to hug my chiropractor. Oh, hey. that sounds like a wonderful person to hug. Great. Thank you, Sorrel. Well, let's dive in. I'm so excited for this. I'm going to turn this over to Tara to introduce our guest today. So let's strap on our seatbelts and get going. Tara. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. Welcome all of you to Wednesday mornings on the Daily Huddle, where we take talk all things communication and relationships, because we know that more effective communication builds better relationships. And when we have better relationships, we have better partners, better families, better communities, and it builds better business. So with that today, we are going to talk about connections and relationships at work. How do we build deeper connections at work? Before I turn it over to um, hear the answer from our guest, Marcy Fortnow, I do want to tell you a little bit about her. I tried to trim down her bio, but it was all too enticing. So I'm going to share it with you. Marcy is the owner of Engaging Play. Engaging Play is a team building and training company that delivers workshops and programs through traditional training, active facilitation, and engaging play. She develops and delivers experiential learning programs for corporate groups, organizations, and boards to raise their leadership level, improve teamwork, enable better communication and problem solving, and increase productivity. Prior to beginning her entrepreneurial ventures, Marcy accumulated more than 12 years in the business software, software world in training and development, change management, and implementation and consulting for both domestic and European clients. She has a bachelor's in psychology and an MBA from, the, from Boston University. Marcy is a certified John Maxwell leadership trainer and is a certified DISC consultant in advanced behavioral analysis. Marcy is also certified as a Lego serious play facilitator, working with clients around alignment, innovation, and problem solving. Marcy comes to us this morning from Chicago. So welcome, Marcy. <laughs> but it's my closet in Chicago. That's, That's what true. I was <laughs> she, she's in her, not California closet, her Chicago closet. <laughs> my Chicago um, closet. <laughs> before we dig in, yeah. I do want to ask you to please give us the answer to our question. How do we build deeper connections in a professional setting at work? 
through play, of course. All that right. is the point. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you here to share the beautiful work that you do. I, I do want you to share first a little bit of your backstory. How did you get into the work of play? Oh, well, I'll I'll share a story that sort of um, sort of underpins it all. Um, I was uh, fresh out of business school. And I joined um, a technology manufacturing company, and my job was to implement a big software system, an ERP system, an enterprise system that would build systems and make life better for everybody. And it was a really big project, and I couldn't get it going. I was just like, nobody would listen to me. I couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't move anything along. <laughs> I was really having trouble. And, um, and my boss came up to me one day and he said, Marcy, I, I see you're having trouble with the team. I was like, oh God, I've been caught. <laughs> and he pulled me into his office and he sat me down and he told me something that was really important. He said, you know, whenever you want to make change, whenever you want to do anything successfully, you need to bring people along, right? You can't just tell them what to do. You have to connect, right? You have to, they have to connect with you. They have to connect with each other. They have to connect with the program you're trying to, to deliver. Um, and, and without that, you'll never get anything moving. And I was like, oh. and, um, and frankly, I've been paying attention to that ever since. Because when people are in community, when they connect with each other or what they're doing, when, um, when they belong, they work better together, they, um, they're more positive, more productive, and they get things done. And, that is, and, and that's what I do now. I help connect um, individuals and teams so that they get more done, more positively, um, on time, on budget. Um, uh, yeah, and, and I do that with play. I do that with play. That is my secret sauce, um, engaging fun activities. So I would imagine um, that what you shared innately deep down, we all know that. We all know how important those connections are, but we're so focused on the numbers and delivering and productivity and answering to the uh, next person on the chain of command that we, we don't prioritize that. How are you able to inspire people to prioritize something that feels as uncomfortable as play at work? Yeah, I think, I think you're, first of all, I want to acknowledge what you said. That is very okay. true, right? Everybody, um, management, leadership, they're looking at numbers, but we all know that it's the people that get things done. And I mean, let's just take a look at the, the situation we're in with this great resignation, right? There's a real reshuffle going on. Yes. And, and it's because um, people are missing that connection, whether that's to what they're doing or to each other. <clears throat> you know, teams are kind of falling apart. People don't feel like they fit in. So I think that this is actually like today's world is a great example of why we should be paying attention to if, if you want to keep your very best people, then you need to engage them and building a positive uh, culture is is an important element. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you do that? Um, you know, it you've got to be very intentional. You've right. got to be very intentional about building connection and helping people get to know each other. And, and you can do that with play. I mean, you can do that Love with it. fun. Yeah, you, it, I feel like you and I, in some ways, we, we deliver something similar to companies and that's connection. And I do it more through a storytelling experience and you do it through play. I bet those two things cross over. I'm listening to you tell some great stories already. I, I would love to know through your work, what would you say you have learned about people? Um, I've learned that people, um, yeah, people want to belong. People want to connect. They want to belong. They want to fit. They want to see themselves in that. Um, and, and when they do, I think it's much more magical. Yeah. 
That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Let, let's take that kind of on the flip side of the coin. And what I really hear you saying is, um, I think the word culture has almost become thrown around so often that people don't stop to, to think about the value of it and exactly what strong culture versus weak culture looks like. What do you see in place where there is no play, there is no time for connection? What, is that, how, what does that culture look like? Uh, it's a dry, barren field. Like, and, and by the way, that's what I hear a lot from companies that, that haven't gotten that, you know, that haven't really made that a priority, um, that they don't have time. Right. Do you hear that a lot, Tara? Is that something you kind of all the time, right? We don't, we don't have time for that. Can, can you do a 15 minute team builder in, in front yeah, can of you do it shorter? <laughs> yeah. Or, or ten, no, we only have 10 minutes in front of a three day PowerPoint death uh, conference, you know, <laughs> like, could, could you do that? Yeah. Uh, I, I had a, I had a, somebody call. I'm like, no, I can't. I, I, I don't even know what to tell you. Let me, let me um, work with you on this three day, uh, you know, death trap and um, that will take years <laughs> off people's lives. And, and let's put, let's weave it in. Yeah. Let's do a kickoff kind of activity. Yeah. Let's after every learning, let's think about how we can reinforce that with some activity or game because mm -hmm. there are, you know, that's really what the play is doing. It's reinforcing and, um, and building connection to the, to the content or, you know, to, to team build each other. Um, you know, it's, it's, ah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll, that's my soapbox. Like, <laughs> I, you don't have time. Passion. I love your passion. It's, <laughs> I, it's fantastic. I know how much you believe in what you do. And um, I've talked to several people who I know that you've provided your service to, and I know that they have just been elated and that they were like so surprised. Um, you, you talk about the value of relationships being mm -hmm. deeper than service. Tell me what you mean by that. And, and yeah, yeah, about, well, um, I wanted to say that, um, that, you know, lots of people communicate and communicate well, right? But then there's this other level of connection, right? Um, not, not it, it's, it's actually challenging to get to that level, right? And I, um, to make communication a chance for connection. Right. And um, surface conversations, but something mm -hmm. deeper. Yeah, something deeper. And, and that takes intention. That really does. And one of the, the things when I'm teaching about taking that communication to a connection, one of my favorite, I mean, there's lots of ways to do that. There's, there, it's actually, you know, a complex topic, but one thing is to put others first. And I think, I think that's something that, um, that when you're communicating with someone, you should think about like, get over yourself, stop thinking about yourself, what I'm going to say, what am I going to do, and start putting other people first, the other person first. And when you can do that, um, then they become seen and heard, they, they feel that. You know, um, I, I went to a coffee shop the other day, and the barista behind the cash register was completely harried and a little bit crazed, <laughs> and there was a line, and um, and I stopped and I made eye contact and I said, how are you today? And she, she stopped for a minute. She was like, oh, <laughs> uh, um, you know, like, oh, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, like she checked in and, right. and, um, and it was kind of a nice exchange, just a little bit of how are you today? What's what going on with you? And there was a connection now, you know, uh, did I get a better cup of coffee? No, but <laughs> I made a connection, right? I mean, it's just that simple thing of putting the focus on the other person. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like to take what uh, your teaching is and really apply it to our lives, mm. you know, and I think we all know how beautiful it is to put the other person first, not only in professional settings, but personal, but then we get in a hurry. Uh, this morning, I came down from my workout. My husband was gone. He had a little note by the coffee maker and it said, just turn it on, honey. I love you. <laughs> Get the coffee ready. Just little things. 
And um, nice. talking to you and that this morning, it reminds me just those little efforts of putting people first. Um, yeah. yeah. I bet and you have some transformational moments from your work that I would love to hear about some where people experience something so much deeper than what they thought. Can you tell us one or two of those? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that. Um, uh, this is, this happened a year ago. Um, it, you know, during, during, I, I was, um, facilitating a meeting with an organization and it was in the middle of, it was that after the first year of the pandemic and they hadn't made, like nobody made their numbers. They were in the recruiting world, uh, and placement and, um, and they, and, the owner of the company was trying to figure out how to have a more positive meeting, (laughs) even though it was like, and then, and then build up on what are we going to do in this coming year? Right. That kind of a meeting Um, to review the results. And then what are we doing? And, and so one of the activities that I did with people, and this was actually virtual was I had them break into pairs and talk about their successes. Um, from the year. Now, like I said, nobody made their numbers, but what did you do well? What did you do that contributed to the organization? What did you, you know, work, not work, um, career, whatever. Um, What did you do well? And they were in pairs privately talking about this, but then I had them come back to the main room, main Zoom room. and, And what I asked was for each person to brag on their partner. So they didn't talk about what they did really well, but their, their partner told and bragged on them. And I got to tell you the way people felt seen and heard and um, acknowledged and the pride. I mean, can you imagine somebody like, you know, bragging on you and saying Mm -hmm. what you did well? And the feeling was so positive and, and really allowed them to say, okay, well, what's next? And I think that was sort of a, it was like a really special um, experience. Does that that make sense? Yes. Yes. From my study, I can even add to that um, Mm -hmm. all the work that I do that what you did in that room was to really elevate serotonin, which, you know, people take pills for that (laughs) and our (laughs) gut health uh, damages our serotonin. And you gave them something that we all deeply, deeply crave. And that's that sense of pride and being heard and feeling validated. That is one of the number one neurotransmitters that we crave. And you created that for that room. So congrats. That's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It was just a little twist of, of activity. Um, you know, that's, that's what I mean by like experiential, just a, mm-hmm. just, um, yeah, it's just a p- little bit of a twist. So someone else is saying what you did well and how good that felt. So I'm thinking, I, I would imagine taking what you just shared with us, which is, you know, if, if you work in a small setting or a team or an organization, try it today. Go, go back to your team and say, hey, let's break out into pairs, share something positive, come back and make the other person um, brag on their teammate. I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take that and run with it. What else <laughs> could you could you guide us to do to build deeper connections through play? Yeah, um, I think that you got to make a little time for it. Um, I would say um, one of the easiest ways uh, that a team can build connections mm-hmm. is in that first ten minutes to have what's called a check in. You know, we get on zoom or we get if we're in person we get into that conference like get it done right we're doing our stand-up meetings we talk business and then we move on and um and because we don't you know because now more people are remote and hybrid it's really important to take some time to check in Mm. how is everybody right Right. i i don't care if you're asking how is everybody you know one good thing you did today you know, one, one funny thing that happened, how's your pet? I, I, you know, whatever it is, um, it's, you can have a playful moment that allows people to check in. I use, I use pictures to ask people to check in. I have, I have um, scales of, with animals on them. Which animal are you today? You know, I have, um, uh, you know, all sorts of playful techniques that um, that take that first 10 minutes of gathering 
and let's everybody sort of see each other. Yeah. Um, so that makes me want to ask one more question, then I'm going to turn it over to my co-host and ask yeah. for some other questions. But I'm wondering if now here, here's what I'm telling myself as I listen to you. I think that oftentimes, especially in the Zoom setting, mm -hmm. we, we get on right on time. We try not to be late, but we don't want to get on early, I think, because of our ego. Like, oh, I, I have something better to do than sit here and wait. Whereas I'm going to start, I'm going to challenge myself to get on Zooms early. If I can't control the setting with the play and the conversation, I can be there early to, to, to spark that fun. So that's a big takeaway for me. Do you find people getting on Zoom at the last minute and then it's time for the meeting? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and the person who's running the meeting thinks they're super efficient by getting right to business. Yes. And right. They, they, they think that's like cool on them. Um, oh, you know, because everybody thinks that spending those few minutes, I, I mean, it's kind of um, frustrating that, that um, it's not valued more when you consider the long-term effect. Uh, I'll just, I'll share one more little thing, which is um, I was speaking with a young person recently who she was hired during the pandemic. So she'd never been to the office and the company she worked for um, was having everybody come back to the office and it was mm -hmm. mandatory. And she's like, well, why should I go back? I don't even know those people. Like nobody in her, in the hiring, in the onboarding, in her working, she never made connections to anybody. So she saw no value in going back. And yet the company was saying, oh, this is how we have our culture is because we're physically together. Like, this is how we're going to do it. Right. And, and they didn't take care of it the whole two years. And, and guess what? You, she's in a different job now. I bet she is. Wow. Right? She said, why should I go back? Hopefully she'll learn from that. Um, speaking of learning, Catherine, what, what are you uh, gleaning from this conversation? Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much. It's um, it's eye opening this connection and what it can do. And I've experienced that myself. But one question keeps coming to me, which is, how do you help people understand the importance of this? Because you meet with people. I don't have time. I don't have capacity. I hear you saying, well, you don't have time not to. But how do you get from I don't have time to having them really understand they need this to get to where they want to be? You know, I think Catherine, I'm slipping it under the covers. I'm like, I'm like, um, it's like Trojan horse time. Oh, you know, um, team building or I, you know, I'm, I'm really a facilitator, right? Mm -hmm. So I come in under that <laughs> and then I bring these things with me. Um, maybe they say, I need, we need leadership training, that seems to be something that um, that companies are willing to invest in, to write down that they're doing, you know, to to be, oh, we're developing our people. And then I bring this other piece in. Oh, okay. And, yeah. and, you know, uh, if there are people who, there are organizations and leaders who get it, and then there are just ones that don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes people ask me, what, what industries do you work with? And it's like, it's not really that. It's more about the t the leadership do right. they think the people are important and worth mm -hmm. something oh, that's beautiful well well good for you that you're able to sneak it in that way i love that you know <laughs> i wish i didn't have to <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah you can relish those times when you don't well yeah. let's open it up to questions from the group and see what what everybody else is learning yeah i'm kind of curious about giovanni um you do a lot of leadership coaching and training. And I'm wondering if you incorporate play into your work, where'd he go? Well, I, see right him. Here. I, I am very significant and serious. Um, <laughs> 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 and uh, whenever they ask me, what, where, which industry do you work? I usually answer wherever people are not important. That's <laughs> I'm playful. Okay, Tara is not laughing. Good thing Marcy is laughing. <laughs> no, well, it I, took I, me a minute. It took me a minute. <laughs> and, and, well, I know you. <laughs> I think what you're saying is, is is where people don't have that mindset of importance. Which no, is what no, I, no, I was just being. Uh, no, no, sarcastic. 
completely okay. characteristic. <laughs> no, I, I really kidding. love what Marcy was saying. Which industry do you work? And what I heard she was saying, wherever people are important, that's where I work. You know, people's well-being, health and vitality is important. That's where I am at. Right. And 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 in, in many mm -hmm. in many companies, um, the context for productivity is not the well-being for people, it's really the processes and procedures and people can be replaced. And so the cultures are it's are really um they're not in, they're not in, the cultures are not great, right? And, and and people are just there for their paycheck or for the insurance. Um my, uh, do I bring play? Um I say I do. I guess in my own kind of style, I bring play, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm not quite. An, I'm not quite. I think I could do more. Let's just say that. I think I think play is critical, and I think I could do more. I'd okay. love to hear what Sorel has to say. A lot of my work I do with him. A lot of our work is together. Some of it is not. But Marcy, this has been really great, um, and thank you for being here. And anyway, that's. I can say more, but I want to be quiet so that other people can pinch in. Yeah, I have a little. Hey, oh, I was going to just say, um, uh, I picked up this stat. I'm just going to share it. Scientists have recently determined that it takes approximately 400 repetitions to create a new synapsis in the brain, unless it's done with play, in which case it takes between 10 and 20 repetitions. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, I, I got that for you, Tara. I'm I'm, I'm, that's what I said. That's right up my alley. I'm copying yeah. your information. I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, I think Sorrell has something to contribute, and then Andrea has a question. Yes, Tara, thank you. I'm not on camera, but I, I love this conversation. And standing on the shoulders of what Giovanni is saying, there, there is a way that the work we do indirectly brings play. Giovanni and I love to do this thing we call sucking guilt and shame out of the room. <laughs> and there's so much play that's unavailable to people because guilt and shame is primarily the vehicle through which human beings work to influence one another. So in guiding people to suck guilt and shame out of the room and out of their own being, there, there, there's a lot of play that's indirect there because you, you can't really be significant and serious about removing guilt and shame out of the picture. And you can't really be serious when you're going to admit how me, myself, or you yourself use guilt and shame out of the room. And so, uh, Marcy, thank you. I'm uh, seeing ways to make play more explicit in that process. Fantastic. Oh, thank you for sharing. Thank you so and much. I think, I, think, I think this episode changed the rest of my self-expression for the rest of my life. I think this episode did it for me. I really wow. think so. Anyway, Andrea, go ahead. Yeah, actually, Gio, I was going to comment uh, on that as well, because what I hear is that play, if you bring it with your personality, that's great, because that's ingraining you, that's who you are. But if you're not that person, you actually can structure play around you. Is it fair to assume or is it fair, my analysis of what you share with us, Marcy, that it is, if you're not that person, it's totally okay. Just bring play in a more structured way or with help to the, to the work. Because, yeah, personality yeah. is one thing. We can bring it. For the ones that are not like that, is it a structure played? Yes, yes. I think... Uh... I think you're right. I think that's a really nice way to look at it, Andrea. Um, you know, so so I'm I, I do Lego serious play. That's one of the things, right? It's it's um, it. Some people go, oh my god, what? <laughs> you know, and some people are like, let me in there. I want to play with Legos. But what we're really doing is we're building, doing storytelling and mm -hmm. and metaphors and telling stories and having a really good enriched conversation because we have a tool to use, right? It's, um, you know, but yeah, not everybody, some people are like Legos. It doesn't fit everywhere, you know, I think, but then people will come along. I think, oh, thank you. So much sense. Yeah, thank you for bringing that to light, Andrea. Um, we are right at 930, Marcy. So if you have a last little piece of wisdom for us, we would be grateful. And then I will close us out. Yeah, I think, I think that, 
I would just say um, this takes intentional effort to, to think about how to build connection, how to take your communication to that next level. And so I, it's worthwhile to actually, you know, um, not just take it for granted, but to put, to, to really try to consider how to, how to build stronger connections. Um, I also, uh, I think I told you, I have a, a gift in case, and I'll put it into the Facebook group. Um, okay, great. That, if that's okay. Yeah, that'd be um, awesome. Which is um, uh, 75 questions every meeting host should have. And it's that check-in question. Okay. And you're so going to put it in the chat or are you going to put it on the Facebook? I can do either. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you do put either. it on the chat here and then maybe we can put it on Facebook as well, whatever works for you. I mm -hmm. tell you what, um, I, I am going to close us out while you put that in there. Um, you know, I have tend to have a playful personality and sometimes I try to... Uh, pull back on that because I'm, I fear people won't take me seriously. And you have mm. just reminded me to go out and um, be myself and be playful. And I hope that this gives everybody the energy to get out there and um, be a little bit more playful. And with that, I think we will end with our seven tenets, which we've right into what you do. And that is, um, we'll start with laughing. Choose to laugh out loud and let those endorphins free. Love folks, love people with all your might and give Give of your heart, of your time, of your spirit. Be generous with all that you do. And those will help you to stress less. Stress less. And what else will help you to stress less? Move that body each and every day freely with exercise and with dance and with play. Eat more plants. It'll do your body good and get your sleep seven or eight hours a night so you can be refreshed and start to play all over again the very next day. Thank you all daily huddlers. This has been a delight and we will see you tomorrow where spiritual matters will take place. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you, everyone.